Okay, this is James with Thermal Battery Systems doing another uh, thermostat configuration video here. We have a Honeywell 8000 series thermostat. Um, here's the thermostat. Okay, in order to get into the configuration menu, we're going to press System. As soon as you've pressed System, you have to press this key and... Wait a minute. These two. We're going to have to hold that down. It was hard to see through the viewfinder. Now we have, we're inside the configuration menu. This is the menu number, and then this is the setting. So I'm going to need to um, go through and actually read the manual as I do this. There's too many numbers to know. So the first one has to do with the, uh, the first digits of the year. So 2-0 meaning it's the year 2013. 2-0 is the first one. This will go up to into the 2100s, but that's all. So evidently these thermostats aren't going to work in 200 years. So next menu item 130 would be the second two digits of the year. So 2013. Okay, uh, item number 140 is the month. We got five. We're in the month of May right now. Item number 150 is the date. It's May 9th. So we're going to leave that. Item number 160 is schedule format. Uh, four reads it's seven day programmable or zero is the only other option there and that is uh, zero is non-programmable. Item 170 is system type. It's 1 through 12. 12 gives us three heat, two cool heat pump with auxiliary heat. That's where I want this. Okay, item number 190 uh, is it skips the fan control, which was 180, and goes to 190, which is the changeover valve. Zero is uh, is in um, changeover valve is energized in cooling, or a one would be in heating. We want it in cooling. Next item 200 is auxiliary heat. Uh, and our options are uh, electric backup heat, fossil is zero, fossil fuel backup heat is one, let's just see, one, one or zero, and uh, zero is the uh, electric backup heat, that's what I want for that. 220 is three, uh, that's the first stage compressor cycle rate, so that would be the Y terminal cycle rate, the factory setting is three, we're going to leave that alone. Number 230 is second stage compressor cycle rate, also 3, we're going to leave that alone. Okay, continuing on here, I'm at number 260. 260 is third stage heat cycle rate. They've got that on factory setting of 9, I'm going to leave that alone. Okay, 270 is emergency heat cycle rate on 9, leave that alone. 280 is the backlight, either 0 is... Um, on when you touch it or one is on low continuously as long as you've got 24 volt AC power and then if you touch it, uh, it it gets brighter I'm gonna leave it on one I've got this one wired up it doesn't matter we have the light on it but um, item number 300 is manual auto changeover zero is manual only one is manual and auto and apparently on this one that's all we get on the others uh, on the 6000 we had the two settings I'm gonna leave that on manual 320 is temperature display Fahrenheit or Celsius. Zero is Fahrenheit, one is Celsius. 330 is daylight savings. Two represents auto changeover. One represents auto, another different kind of auto changeover with a date. And then there's a zero for you can turn it off. I'm going to leave it on auto. 340 is remote sensor in case we have an outdoor temperature sensor on here. We do not. We're going to leave that as a zero. Oh, let's go back. 340 also says you could have an outdoor temperature sensor on here for display only would be a uh, one. If you select item two, uh, you'd have an outdoor temperature sensor that could control a heat pump. That would probably be useful for an air source heat pump that can't operate below a certain outdoor temperature range. It's not going to make any difference for a ground source unless you've determined the balance point and you want to shut it off at that point. Um, you know, if, 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 if the balance point wasn't um, 
wasn't within the full range of uh, design conditions. And three would be as if you have an indoor sensor. So there's three options there, just to be aware of. That's item number 340. Number 500 is, uh, let's see, it's, so it skips several there that are not in the in this configuration now. So 500 is furnace filter change out reminder. You can go from basically zero to six, and those are gonna show different, uh, that'll remind you based on different days run time. One is 10 day, and six is 365 day, and zero is no reminder. 510 is humidifier pad change out reminder. We got one through three there, choosing anywhere from no reminder to 90 days to 365. 520 is UV lamp change reminder. Zero is off. One is 365 days. That's all you get on there. 530 is adaptive intelligent recovery. One is on. Zero is off. I'm going to leave that off. 540 is program periods, so we can do four. Four or two is your settings here. Four means four programmable periods, and two means two programmable periods. Whether it's, it's either wake, leave, return, sleep, or just wake and sleep. Leave that on uh, two. I like to minimize the, uh, the complexity here. Uh, 580 is compressor protection, so it's anywhere between one minute or zero minutes and five minutes. I'll leave that on zero. 600 is high temp range stop, so you got your 90 degrees. 610 is your low range, 50 degrees. Uh, 640 is the clock format, 12 or 24 hour time. Leave it on 12. 650 is extended fan timer. Um, that'll run the fan in heating mode for 90 seconds after the set point if you have it on or off. And then 660 is the same thing in the uh, cooling mode. It'll run the fan for 90 seconds after the call if you want it to. 670 is the keypad lock. If you want to lock the keypad, keep people from messing with it, you can do so with a 1, uh, which would be partially locked. In other words, access to temperature settings only, or two is fully locked. 680 is heat temperature control. So we have, uh, I don't understand these ones. Two says standard temperature control, which is recommended. One is choose if room is warmer than set temperature. Three is choose if room does not reach set temperature. That's in the heating mode. Then they do the same thing in the cooling mode where they say, you know, choose two if standard temperature control, choose one if room is cooler than set temperature, and choose three if room does not reach set temperature. I, I don't understand those, to be honest. 700 uh, temperature display offset. Uh, in this one, we can, we can decide if we want the display on the readout to be higher or lower than what the room actually is. 710 is the reset. If we select uh, apparently zero on this, then no reset. If we select one and then hit done, we're going to reset all the options. Okay, now we're back around to the test, uh, test portion of the menu. So essentially we are done. Let's try and make this thing work. Uh, we're going to go to system and we will, uh, it's going to blink until we hit done. It's off there. Let's do it. Let's take it to emergency heat first, and then let's just see if we can make emergency heat work. We got a set point of 82. It says it's 70. The heat is on. It's turned on. The fan G terminal is activated, and the W terminal is on. Nothing else is on, so that's correct operation for emergency heat. Let's change this to regular heat. Um, okay, hit done. Now we've got uh, fan, Y terminal, not Y2, not W, no O. So we're correct operation so far. Same thing as on these other uh, Honeywell thermostats. It's going to wait one minute before it decides to uh, turn on the, the Y2 second stage compressor. Um, I'm not going to wait for that. I don't feel like it. It's, this thermostat has too much going on with it and the video would be too long. So we're going to take it to cooling, done, ok, 
Okay, let's go down here and get the cooling set point below where we're at. Okay. And we've got permanent hold selected, so it should now turn on and give us a cooling call. Indeed, our O terminal energized and our Y and our G. So, correct operation in the cooling mode, and you're just going to have to take my word for it that it's going to wait. Um, uh, it's going to wait one minute before it turns on the second stage compressor, as long as there is a significant enough differential. And I suppose, why don't we just, we will wait on that since we're kind of be not too far away from it here. I'll make sure there's still plenty of cooling call, and we should just wait a second, and that Y2 terminal should start, uh, should energize in just a moment here, meaning the, uh, the thing will energize the, the full capacity of a single stage heat pump. It would go from 68% capacity, or thereabouts, which would be how much you'd get if just Y1 is energized, to 100% capacity if Y2 is energized. So we'll see if it does that. We've got system is on. There it goes. Cooling activated. And just like the other ones, it does not say anything about Y2 being energized. It still just says cool on. So lastly, let me just show real quick how we've got the, the thing wired. Um, the only thing special to be aware of here is that uh, I do use that blue wire right there, which is a jumper between the E and the AUX terminal. Notice if you're following the heat pump, which would be the outer terminals, there is nothing designated as W, and W is often what we would be designating at the heat pump to be, uh, to be running the uh, auxiliary strip heat. So in this case, we're going to be wiring the heat pump terminal, often labeled W, is going to be the wire going to that is going to be going in the E and the AUX terminals which I have connected with that jumper. So the white wire is the one that's going to be going to the heat pump strip heat <laughs> terminal and the blue wire is jumping AUX and E together and that's what gives us the ability to manually uh, you know when we select on the thermostat the system type we can uh, make it run that way or if it just simply is not keeping up with the load enough it'll switch on that way. So, this is James with Thermal Battery Systems. Thanks for watching.